Welcome back to my channel, Survive and Thrive. And today, I wanted to talk about places to invest, especially in days of uncertainty, like we've been seeing in the stock market and the whole bloodbath that's been happening. And many times, people are looking for safe haven assets or places to put their money to make sure that they don't lose their full investment. And one of the ways to do that is obviously to diversify your portfolio. And one of the sectors I really like to put money into to be able to offset during the times when the stock market is down is in consumer staples because it's a defensive stock sector and it really helps to protect your money. The company I wanna focus on today is one that I have talked about before. Many of you know this big warehouse store where people go for everyday groceries, household items, and pretty much everything that you could need for your day-to-day -day living. That company is Costco, ticker symbol C-O-S-T. And this first article in Motley Fool, Costco has operated in an interesting economic environment over the past few years, making it harder to value accurately. And you can say that for a company that's over $500 per share, that it seems like their valuation is pretty high. But let's take a deeper dive and look at some of the details to really help to understand the valuation. Costco stock has been an excellent investment over the past decade, rising about 530% over that time. Its steady gain over that time has significantly outpaced the broader market's 201% rise. Over the past two years, this warehouse club retailer has been doing great business and escalating the enthusiasm from investors eager to snap up shares. That sent Costco's valuation up and resulted in a price to earnings ratio of 43. Such an elevated PE might seem reasonable in a growth stock, but it is pretty high for an established, slower growing company. Some investors are starting to wonder if Costco stock is getting overpriced. Valuation is a consideration in determining whether or not to buy a stock, but it should always be evaluated in the context of a company's long-term potential. That's why you shouldn't be too worried about Costco's elevated valuation. Let's go into the details. Costco's business is packed full of potential. Before the pandemic, Costco's quarterly sales growth was typically a high single digit percentage, but over the past two years, the retailer has been posting mid-teens percentage level growth. In fiscal 2022 second quarter, ended February 13, Costco reported a 16% boost in sales year over year to 51 billion. In March, sales rose even higher with a 19% year over year increase. At the start of the pandemic, sales rose as customers stocked up on essentials. Lately, sales are up as customers look for ways to combat inflation. Costco's rock bottom prices are always popular and its fee-based model drives high volume. The company's strengths become more apparent during tough economic times. One of those strengths is Costco's ability to leverage its relationships with suppliers to get merchandise customers want despite supply chain issues. Another potential for revenue growth is Costco's still relatively small total number of warehouses. It operates 829 global stores with 573 in the U.S. and management plans for 28 net new stores in 2022 alone, slightly more than its typical openings. Costco takes its time opening new stores, but each warehouse averages around $25 million in annual sales. So that'll be a big boost to their revenue if they follow through on opening all 28 stores this year. And... Like it has been stated, they are a slow growing company, but very intentional with their growth plan. And so that does make consumers very comfortable in knowing that they're a stable company that is really planning out how they go about their business and not just throwing money away. While researching the company, this particular author found this gem in 2000 and around the time of its last stock split, Costco's earning per share came in a penny below expectations, causing several Wall Street analysts to downgrade the stock. Since then, Costco has gained more than 1,500%, laughably outperforming the S&P 500. Incidentally, the stock was trading at a P.E. ratio of more than 50 right before that 2000 split. Investor takeaway, long-term investors know that you can't time the market. Over the past month, Costco's valuation was creeping a little too high for the average investor's taste, but when the share price began to come down, it's just the market evening things out. If you bought the stock a month ago, you've seen your investment decline by about 8.2%.
but if you bought because you see Costco's immense potential to continue growing and capturing market share, you know not to worry. Like any stock, there will be plenty of short-term ups and downs on the path to long-term gains. And that's the mindset you have to have, especially for these companies that you truly believe in. Anytime that you see them dip, if it's one that you really want to stand behind, then buy in more when it dips and plan for the long haul. Like I said, this is one of those companies that has been around for a long time. They're very reliable and in times of need, people still need to be able to feed their families and have those household items taken care of. So Costco, in my mind, is one of those companies that is a safe haven place where you can invest your money even when the market really takes a dump. Next here in this article, Seeking Alpha, Costco, the stores are always full and the stock will soon reflect it. In summary for this article, Costco is one of the few growth names that have defensive qualities against inflation. An economic recession is likely to bring more foot traffic to Costco relative to other retailers. Same store sales are likely to continue to be robust. Costco is likely to grow its market share during a market downturn from their competitive pricing philosophy. This author usually covers technology in their research articles on Seeking Alpha, but today he wanted to discuss one of his favorite consumer discretionary names as both defensive qualities in today's macroeconomic environment, yet growth-like prospects for its share price. And as we all know, that name is Costco. While most people in the US are familiar with Costco just to make sure everyone is on the same page, here is a refresher. To put it simply, Costco is one of the largest big box retail names that has one of the strongest gross margin profiles for its industry at 11%, along with a strong recurring membership business that has a renewal of approximately 90%. Its market leading status, along with its corporate culture to keep prices as best as possible for consumers, make it exceptionally challenging for competitors to take away market share away from Costco. In addition, the retailer has a customer list of over 63 million households and over 114 million total cardholders. A brief description of the current macroeconomic environment from their social media channel, Data Checks. As an investment strategist who is also a content creator on YouTube, Twitter, and Substack, this author has access to large sets of consumer sentiment and retail emotions via the comments that he receives from his audience, as well as the data he's able to collect via polls that he conducts. And in recent polls, you can see that below the viewers on YouTube who are most likely well-educated, affluent, and work in traditionally stable industries are getting skittish about the economy. You can also see in this poll that only about 35% of his viewers believe they have a strong outlook on their own job security and job prospects. That doesn't exactly check off the box that we are in a strong economy. You can also see in the second poll that on top of the job security concerns, his viewers also reported that more than 35% of them saw rent prices go up at least 4% while only 16% of viewers saw rent prices grow modestly between 1% and 3%. His poll data is also highly consistent with data coming from Redfin and Realtor, where they report U.S. metro cities seeing rent go up at least double digits. Rent prices went up 17%, and you can see this list of cities, anywhere from 17% all the way up to 30%, so quite a significant increase and when people are already living paycheck to paycheck, we see that that's going to have an impact to where we are economically and potentially pushing us towards a recession. Now, the reason he is providing this background information is so that the readers here get refreshed on the fact that the financial conditions for most people in the U.S. is getting tighter and more challenging. In fact, according to the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index, which now printed 65.2 for the latest month, which accounts for consumers' frustration towards higher prices across consumer goods, as well as rising interest rates. Inflation is an already known serious issue, and fortunately, with the zero COVID policies happening in China and the Russia-Ukraine crisis, elevated prices seem to want to stubbornly hang around, which is not good for anybody. Now, why this matters for Costco investors in this challenging economic environment, we must be on the lookout for companies that will likely still maintain their loyal customer base while being able to still execute on their growth initiatives. He believes that Costco checks off a lot of the boxes for investors looking for a company to provide both a defensive dividend yield and offensive qualities when a rebound materializes. 
In April, Costco reported comparable sales of 12.6%, which was above 8.9% growth the street was expecting. In addition, U.S. core comps reported 8.1%, also ahead of the street's 7.7% consensus estimates. These figures are especially impressive as it appears macro headwinds from higher mortgage rates, the wealth effect of a declining stock market, and a weaker outlook on job prospects did not impact Costco's business performance. In fact, because Costco competes very heavily on pricing, consumers that are skittish about the economy may shy away from more discretionary spending and spend more time at Costco where pricing continues to be provided at the best possible rates adjusted for inflation. And that's why I really believe and stand behind Costco and think that if you don't have them in your portfolio, it can be a way to help really stabilize when times are tough in the market. Balancing risk and reward with Costco in this challenging macro environment, we've witnessed lately that any company that is unable to meet street consensus figures or provide guidance well above estimates was likely to have their share price punished or have any meager rally fade immediately the following day. With Costco's valuation trading at north of 40x earnings, we have to readily accept that a sharp and unexpected downturn in consumer confidence makes their share price vulnerable as it will impact their same store sales figures and therefore their comparable results. He believes consumers will continue to shop at Costco in spite of macro headwinds such as interest rates and inflation because Costco offers all of its customers simply the best possible pricing for its high quality products. He is more concerned about a prolonged economic downturn and its impact on Costco than from competitive forces like Walmart and Amazon. The reason he does not believe Costco is fundamentally challenged by Walmart and Amazon is that shoppers go to these different retailers for different reasons. Costco is focused on selling products in bulk with a membership business model, while Walmart adopts a big box traditional retailer business model. For investors, Interested in Costco from an entry planning and technical analysis perspective, Costco's 200 moving day average is approximately $507 per share, and the stock is now testing this level which hasn't been breached since March of 2021. For investors who are looking for a name that has inflation resistance defensive qualities while having the offensive characteristics of a growth stock, he believes Costco is now an opportunity for investors to start building a long position at an objective entry at its current long-term 200 moving day average in the face of a challenging consumer spending environment that is likely to drive stronger retail market share gains for Costco in the coming quarters. So one to do more research if this is one that you want to get into or continue to add, but be looking for these times when the price is at a good entry point and you can be happy about where you got in, especially if you're going to write it out for a number of years. Now, while not good for the everyday consumer, in this article, Costco membership prices may be going up. Costco membership fees may go up imminently and cost more this summer. Fees for the membership only big box retail store typically increases every five years and the five year mark is approaching this June. Costco membership prices may be going up. The report contends that Costco's chief financial officer, Richard Galanti, hinted to investors that another fee increase could hit the summer. For small businesses that use Costco for bulk buying and to save money on a range of products, it is important they are aware of if and when membership to the store will be increasing. This way they can plan the increase into budgets and expenses and will not be hit by any nasty surprises. During the last earnings call, Galanti told investors, on average, they, membership fees, were done about every five, a little over every five and a half years, about five years and seven months. So five years from the anniversary of the June of 17 would be this June. And the rise that happened in 2017 impacted 35 million members. According to the Fox News report in 2017, half of the members impacted by the membership rise were executive members. The increase put an additional $5 in personal and business memberships in North America. It raised all US and Canada Gold Star business and business add-on members to an annual fee of $60, while executive memberships increased by $10 to $120. Costco renewal rates climb. Despite the challenges hitting the retail industry, including inflation soaring to a 40-year high, renewal rates continue to increase for Costco. In the three-month period ending in March 2022, renewal rates in the US and Canada were at 92%, higher than the previous quarter. 
light of escalating renewal rates, Galanti said the company feels very good about their member loyalty, success in getting members to move to executive member, which are the most loyal. Small businesses that rely on Costco to purchase products for business and resale use should be aware of the potential annual membership increase in June this year. They should also consider the business, the business benefits of Costco membership despite increases to membership, hence why so many members choose to renew every year. And that's the key, is even if they are increasing rates, they've got such a high return on recurring subscribers. And given that, this will help to only increase and boost their revenue, which helps the bottom line and will show better in their next earnings and future earnings from there and give investors even more reason to want to buy in. So lastly, I wanted to focus on what they've done with their dividends and they've paid out very consistently. And this is yet another reason why you would want to buy into a company such as Costco outside of them just being a defense stock. They also have the added benefit of paying out the long-term investors who buy and hold. And the great thing is if we go back to 2011, you can see, like I said, that they've always paid out consistently. 24 cents, 27 cents, 31. You know, we go through the years consistently paying out every quarter, whether it's a 1.1% increase or just under a percent, but always increasing. And then you see every once in a great while, they have these special dividends. December 2020, $10 per share. So this really starts to add up. And I skipped over some of the other specials that they had, but 2017, they had a $7 per share dividend return to their investors, $5 per share back in 2015. And then even back in 2011, another special dividend at $7 per share. So they really do value their investors and people who are loyal to their company and you can see that in their dividend payout and so like i said this is one that you want to add to your portfolio and really have it be a cornerstone to your array of companies that you're invested in to help you really be diversified and be able to take advantage when we have tough economic times like we're having now and could be for the foreseeable future so that was really my focus and what I wanted to touch on today. Would love to hear from others on thoughts about this. And as always, make sure to hit the like button if you've gotten value out of this video. Subscribe as I'm trying to build my YouTube community and I want to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark in 2022. Make it a great week. Help each other out for those investment opportunities. And don't just survive, thrive!